guys, welcome back to the SBP Podcast Mobile Filmmaking. You're listening to episode 161, and I'm your host, Susie Botello. So my guest in this episode I'm really excited to share with you is Ant Pruitt. Ant is a regular kind of. <laughs> uh, he's been here probably about four or five times already in the uh, on the show. And uh, he's an expert photographer. Uh, he, he tells stories with his camera through photography. He also shoots videos and things like that. And he's part of the uh, Twit Network, which is uh, This Week in Tech. He's one of the hosts. But I wanted to um, let you know that he's also been one of the judges for the International Mobile Film Festival a number of years now. And um, I wanted him to share a little bit with us about telling stories through photography, uh, a little more about Android photography, and just a few other things that we'll disclose, or I don't know, that sounds kind of like a legal term, disclose, disclosure. Uh, But we'll share them with you uh, as we're moving along in the show. But I wanted to give you a heads up really quick about some dates that are coming up because it's already October. Now, we've got Halloween coming up, and we've also got the first regular deadline for feature films. But then in November on the 19th, we also have the regular deadline for the short films, all the short films. So for the short film competition and for the rookie films. So these things are starting to just sort of fall into place, and I just didn't want you to miss out. Now, we're already organizing the film festival, which is happening in April, April 26th through the 28th of 2024. So if you happen to have your calendar handy right now, mark the dates, uh, whether you're participating as a contestant or whether you want to come on over and meet uh, people from this niche community of mobile filmmaking. I think the iPhone 15 is going to bring a lot of new people a lot of new storytellers into our community. And, um, you know, being in San Diego, it's a, well, it's a pretty cool place to be. And you know how I feel about the tacos. <laughs> so anyways, um, let's go ahead and let's go and talk to Amp. What do you say? I, I think I heard you say yes. Oh, yeah, you're ready for that? All right, then let's go. Hey, Ant, how are you? I am unbelievable as always, Miss Susie. What about yourself? Oh, I love your default answer. Uh, (laughs) Unbelievable as always. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) Good. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. Excellent. What is that show? Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. You went there. I never watched it. Thank goodness. You didn't. I did not it's watch that. It's an all-American classic. Which is probably why I did not football. watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to go there. I had to go there and pull up a movie that you've never watched that is like 100 years old by now. Um, so, But you've watched, you know, other movies, I'm sure. So uh, let's talk about movies. Okay. What do you say? Considering All this right. is a, the podcast is dealing a lot of, with film, so sure. Yeah. Well, you know, in the <laughs> in the current news of the day, all anybody is talking about is politics and movies. Yeah. Because of the strikes and all yeah. that stuff. But also, you know, like last couple of weeks or maybe it, maybe we're going in. Well, actually, by the time this comes out, it'll be like probably three weeks in or a month or something. So the, the news was it started with the release of the iPhone 15. Mm-hmm. And then Black Magic uh, camera app, and then the the WGA the the Writers Guild settled or something. Mm-hmm. Now we're waiting for the actors. I mean, we're just moving along, and I just think it's pretty awesome. It's a good it's thing, like, uh, very good thing. Yeah, it's all happening. 
you know, like stacking dominoes or Legos, depending. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's like, you know, one, two, three, and it's all revolving around independent filmmaking and just storytelling and filmmaking. It's like, you know, I, I just think it's pretty, and technology, using the technology for that. Yeah. Because there's two kinds of art as far, well, there's three now with AI, but. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, you gotta throw that in. Yeah, well, there's three. Everything travels in threes that that supersedes, and then everything else falls along. But there's uh, there's what I call the traditional conventional art, which is you know people who still like to draw and paint and sculpture with their hands and things like that. Mm-hmm. Then there's the tech art, right? Which we use, you know, software and digital, and we put everything online. And all of that. And I'm inventing all this, by the way. Um, and, then, <laughs> and then there's AI, which is a whole different animal. It's, it's still artistic in, in its own form. Um, but, uh, but that's its other thing. Yeah. And every time I have a guest on, we talk a lot about AI. I end up uh, cutting up the, the episodes. It's like, I didn't mean for that much to get in here. Mm-hmm. Um, so... <laughs> Well, but, I have uh, no I, problem with you cutting our discussion on it because I swear I talk about it all, all the time, the time <laughs> all the time, begrudgingly. Um, yeah. You know, but it is the tech news, you know. Um, for those that don't know, I am a <clears throat> producer and host at twit.tv, which is a podcast network that has, uh, I think we have about 40 hours of content each week. You guys are um, awesome for consumer technology space and AI comes up on damn near every one of the shows, yeah. including the show that I co-host. And I'm pretty tired of talking about it. I've been pretty tired of talking about it for a couple months now. But, you know, I just say my piece and then I just sit back and watch everyone and listen to everyone say their piece because I, I don't have much to say on it anymore these days. <laughs> it's um you know what no one's talking about ai on, on what? is how it helps uh, challenged people accessibility whatever. concerns yes yeah yes i think it totally helps with that a lot i used to know somebody with parkinson's um who could who probably would benefit today from that a mm-hmm. lot mm-hmm. you know considering all this stuff that's happening with voices uh he couldn't speak very well he couldn't be understood and i think ai was uh, right now, right as it is, would be very. Let's see, Miss Susie, that is the thing right there. Our craptastic journalism of today, it is all in or all out when it comes to a specific topic. I don't care if it's Ford versus Chevrolet. You know, it's all in or all out kind of news. If it's um, politics, it's all right or all left. There's no middle ground. And with with AI, artificial intelligence, it's all in far as, boy, this is the, the best thing ever from a technological standpoint or all out or, oh, my God, this stuff is going to kill us tomorrow in our <laughs> the sleep. The nuclear bomb, it's going to push the button, right? It's, it's, no one ever looks at, you know, the, the middle ground of it. And, yes, I am saying this about the so-called journalistic heads of our planet that's supposed to be providing news and everything's just so damn sensationalized and they never say okay ai is great but it's not perfect you know ai is bad but it's not you know yeah and it, it just annoys the crap out of me and stuff like you just mentioned with accessibility is a great benefit Yep. It is a great benefit, but you'll never hear about it because that doesn't move the needle when it comes to um, uh, sharing the news with everybody because it's got to be sensationalized. And accessibility is not sensational. Exactly. And you know why it has to be sensational? Because that's what brings in the profits for these corporate media um, organizations or companies or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, so anyway, so it would be very helpful for that. (laughs) 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 Um, But that's not what we're going to talk. By the way, Aunt, um, Mm -hmm. I started this uh, this panel uh, back in June 
uh, with a few people. Um, and <laughs> it's one of the first things we did when we did our first official episode. And I actually titled it that we can't stop talking about AI. Oh, gosh. Uh, because it was unbelievable. And every time I tried to sway, you know, you were talking about the needle, but the conversation mm -hmm. into another topic, it ended up, you know, AI became a part of every single topic on that one. And then after that, it's just a running joke with us. Wow. Look at that. We didn't even talk about AI wow. this time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's a big deal for artists. You it know, is, um, it you is. You know, especially yeah. the smaller independent artists. It is, but again, as I said previously, it's AI is not all terrible and it's not all great. It's it's somewhere in between. That's right. It's almost human in that sense. Right. <laughs> um. Well, listen, I wanted to ask you a question because I just remembered. So, you know, you're on threads somewhat. Yeah. I'm on threads. Mm hmm um, I like to give a lot of the the new things. I like to explore them, and I I'm kind of liking it there. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, there was someone. Uh, I'm gonna give her a shout out. Uh, her name is Carrot Cake Art, and carrot not meaning the vegetable or the fruit, if that's what it is now, because <laughs> tomato <laughs> is a fruit, right? Tomato is uh, always carrot, been a fruit, but that's for another discussion. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, carrot as in gold, K A R A T cake art. And she asked a question there and I thought, would this would be a wonderful question to ask you? Uh, because I knew that you were, I think we had confirmed our appointment to record this mm -hmm. on that same day. So here's what she asked. And then I'll tell you what I said. What's which is the, very uh, short. what's the handle again? I'm going to look them up cause I have the computer yeah, in front of me. It's, uh, yeah, with a K, K R, mm -hmm. I mean, carrot, like K A R A T, then cake, which mm. sounds delicious, and, and then art. Got it. A R T. All right, I found them. Okay. Okay. So this is what, what they said. They asked, hey, do we count photography as art? Or is it solidly separated as photography? What I answered was photography is visual art. A camera is a tool. And then I told her I was going to give her a shout out if, if she was okay with that and ask you that question. Hmm. So what do you think? I would have stopped at the first question with a yes, period. <laughs> <laughs> oh just just totally confuse her <laughs> yeah photography is art it is it yes. is you, you and, and you and you answered it perfectly um because you know the camera is is, is a tool you know because otherwise the camera is just something that sits on the shelf yeah <laughs> that's about it but it is a tool to create art um there's going to be people well, probably not as much now, but at one point in time, it were people that didn't necessarily believe in photography as being an, an art form because they thought you needed to go out and get an easel and get all of your paints and get your canvases and figure out how to properly mix to get your tones right and figure out how to uh, do lighting on a canvas, you know, whereas a photographer is literally taking real light <laughs> and creating, creating whatever they need to create. So... But no, photography is definitely an art. It is. Also in the history of photography, I mean, uh, portraits, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they used to be painted. Yep. You know, and then, and then with photography, then people would take a wagon with the gear <laughs> <laughs> uh, and do portraits, mm -hmm. uh, take portraits of people. And, and I think the cost of that was a lot. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it, it, it kind of like le literally stemmed from art anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you. Thank you for answering that. Sure. Um, so, okay, check. <laughs> 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 um, Ant, you're going to be one of the judges for a film festival for 2024. All right. Again. So you are a, a rock star in our film festival. 
even though you like jazz. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I'm a star at all in, in the festival. Oh, you are definitely. Nah, you're you're, nah. you're awesome. Yeah, the creators are the stars. Those the, the creators. Well, that's that's, that's my thing. The art. They are the stars, and it's been some pretty good stuff coming in over the last couple of years. So Got to give credit where credits due. Yeah, you know, I have to tell you, uh, the people that came to the festival this last time when you know, you judged all those, um, Mm -hmm. all the short films and everything. Mm -hmm. They said, even for the rookie films that there weren't, there were no bad films, but they were all really good, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I just want to say thank you for, for judging because you do have one of the toughest jobs. I mean, yes, they create them and they're the stars and I totally give them the red carpet and all that, you Mm know, Um, Mm -hmm. I give them so much love in our festival, it's, um, I think they were like, okay, enough, (laughs) (laughs) but, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's incredible because, you know, curating the programming, um, is actually pretty cool because you have such, you saw the difference of, you know, you have music, You have some abstract experimental films. You have some documentaries. You have some narrative films, you know, just um, some horror, little horror flicks and things like that on the short films. end. Mm -hmm. it's just amazing what people can create. So uh, so what I want to do is I wanted to share with our listeners some storytelling advice and, um, you know, with photography, because your thing is photography. Why don't you share a little bit about why photography is your forte? Well, actually, it, it started out mostly because of how accessible photography is. You know, you, even years and years and years ago, it's way more accessible now, but even years and years and years ago, photography was just a lot easier for anyone to pick up a camera and get out there and just go shoot. And you didn't necessarily have to have the $3,000 camera. Well, it wasn't really 3000 Maybe it's, yeah, maybe $3,000 back then, 20 years ago, which is the stuff that you would see for the Associated Press and stuff like that. You know, you could just get a $400 point-and-shoot camera that what most people were getting for the family vacations every year and just shoot a lot of throwaway stuff. But yeah. if someone actually was deliberate, they could still create some pretty fascinating images with that three, four hundred dollar camera. And for me, that was the, the, the I guess it was a bit of the gateway for me is just knowing that I could I have this camera and I'm not doing anything else. Shoot something, you know. Um, but there was also the other aspect of me being somewhat a fringe geek and a fringe nerd where I destroyed my grandmother's camera and I was trying to figure out how to put it back together. So that fascinated me and stuff like (laughs) that, you know, so that fascinated me and just sort of had me want to dive into the field even more because I saw the inner workings of a camera and figuring out the fundamental values of what happens when an image is captured. You know, people talk about the, the uh, oldest cameras being so big that you had to put them on the back of a truck because it was so much gear. And yeah, they were some big cameras, you know, a gazillion years ago and I'm exaggerating with the with curtain. The years. Yeah. But <laughs> before that, you know, you could just use a, a freaking cardboard box with a hole in it, you know, and that's just, the camera was built off, off of those fundamentals there. And, and that just fascinated me. And I just been, been stuck with it ever since and it's now more so just an outlet for me i don't shoot as much as i used to nowadays for clients uh but the pandemic really forced me to change my focus no pun intended and um i started putting more effort into video but um i still love picking up my camera and grabbing stills but nowadays the stills that i grab tend to be more stuff of my son or stuff that nobody ever sees you know it's just stuff that i i you know like i'll see deer outside 
here in the in the field and I like to go snap photos of the deer you know stuff like that or birds or hummingbirds and things like that isn't it amazing though Art how two people can walk on the same field right mm-hmm. and each one of the each one of them see and feel something completely different in the same spot almost yeah and the thing is um and particularly with with photography um we would have never known that if if there wasn't photography in the space you know people go out on photo walks all the time and they walk the same streets the same field and whatnot and tend to be together like damn near side by side stop and taking a couple of shots and and you get two different perspectives and it's a beautiful thing because neither one is you know not necessarily right or wrong it's just they're different or go or, or you're walking on the same street every single day and every single day you see you notice something different yeah yeah photography helped me with that not well photography helped me with that as well as my bit of I'm. Um, uh, I'm not paranoid, but <laughs> I'm not paranoid, but I've been compromised in my lifetime here uh, digitally. So I'm always a little bit on the security side of things when I go out and about. So I'm, I tend to notice things, you know, different from the hour before or the day before and things like that. But photography does help with that if you go to somewhere consistently to shoot. And I have done that. I will go, you know, there used to be this river near the place, I, near the, the, the house I lived in four or five years ago in Carolina. And I've walked that river, I don't know how many times, hundreds of times. And it was always nice to go down there because it, it was never the same scene for me. You know, there was even a specific spot on the trail in it never looked the same because number one, the sun is going to move throughout the day. So the light's going to change. And then number two, you have weather conditions are going to change, you know, because in the Carolinas, we actually have four seasons. So the weather is not going to be the same on the, on every Tuesday or every Monday. It's not going to be the same. Um, and, you know, when the seasons change, that changes everything else too. You know, it's going to be more green this time of year. Or it's going to be more brown and golden and orange this time of year. Or it's going to be totally bare. You know, and and and, and I I love that. And I walked that trail. I don't know how many times. Gosh, I mean, I could literally walk it with my eyes closed as I've walked it that many times. You know. Yeah, that's that's so so awesome. And that's where the storytelling part comes in, right? Mm hmm. And that's another thing. Even you know, if you can. Like thinking about that trail, I have a print that's up that is one of my more popular prints that's sold. And it's from that trail. Um, it's I've always thought the trail was a bit mystical because of how often it changes in a in a in a given time period you you know even within a 24 hour period it changes and if you can figure out a way to to frame up that shot and capture you know what the trail or scene is trying to present to you of the story you're you're, you're winning you, you 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 got it you got it figured out and i'm still working on that sometimes you know but then every now and then i get lucky and can see ah Okay, this is it. And that particular shot that's you know up on antperot.com slash prints, I called it mystical trail. Because I know which one you're talking about. It's beautiful every time you share it. Because that 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 moment, man, I remember standing right there and just the feeling that I had when I saw the shot. And I've and again I've been to that particular bend and curve of the trail a gazillion times. But that particular day, that particular moment, it felt like some type of mystical energy. And the colors were the colors were not necessarily what I have in the final print, but it's pretty close. And that's a weird thing about me. I know um, when I go to frame up a shot and I click the shutter, my my brain has a vision 
an additional vision what uh based on what's in the actual frame and when i come back to my computer to do my post processing i do my post processing based on what i felt and saw in my brain at that particular moment not necessarily what's on the screen you know most people when they come back to edit they'll say oh this thing is overexposed i need to pull this exposure back a little bit turn the brightness down a little bit you know fix the contrast no i'm thinking gosh when i was out there it was at about 4 p.m. and on a on a April afternoon, the gr- the green leaves are starting to come in right now. The sun was at about you know 30 degrees angle, and there's just a little bit of shadow coming over here, and it made me feel like so and so. And every slider that I hit inside of Lightroom is based off of what I saw at that particular time, and then I won't stop until I recreate it. That's, um, that's not, I don't think that's actually, I think that's awesome, quite honestly, <laughs> is what I do. Um, because Thank you. for me, I, so when I go out, um, I see photos and this has happened to me throughout my whole life. When I was really little, I used to walk around my, my first camera. I was like seven. Um, and I mean, it wasn't like, it's not a DSLR or anything like that. It was just a a little camera. And I used to walk around looking through the viewfinder. Yeah. And it was like, for me, that little viewfinder was what, it was like I was in a movie and I was watching a movie, but I was controlling it at the same time. And when I go out just with my phone, which I call you know, my little window, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. And you point your little window at anything. Um, I, everything is a photo opportunity. I mean, I've got almost 8,000 photos on my phone right now because I can't help myself, you know, and I take more than one because, you know, it's not good enough to, it never really captures it on the first try. I have sometimes, you know, snapped about, 12 photos of the same thing, just walking from different angles and tilting and this and that. It's like, this is not exactly how I want it to come out, which is exactly kind of like that, like a vision, Mm -hmm. you know? But I think that's awesome because basically your kind of thinking is like a cinematographer, Mm -hmm. uh, thinking of it as, as a story, right? Mm -hmm. Where you go out on a location and they're framing it they're seeing the story as a vision play out in front of them. Mm -hmm. And then they come out with their camera on the day off to shoot it. And they have that vision in mind and then they have to create that. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. I, I'm, I still think the cinematographers are light years ahead of me on that standpoint. Um, I'm, I I still don't think I'm on their level just yet. And, And yes, I'm a budding filmmaker and still trying to you know get a grip on on understanding composition and story uh, for moving frames you know it's it's for me it, it comes a little bit quicker and a little bit easier with a single frame from a photograph versus you know figuring out something to put over a heck even 15 seconds of moving frames you know what I mean yeah um so I I have nothing but but respect for video filmmakers um, for what they what they create and just the process itself to come up with it um, because everything doesn't just happen <laughs> with film it takes some direction it takes some timing and and it it, it doesn't just happen you know right yeah and, and you have to visualize it you know with all the production stuff, yep. you know, the lighting and the shadows, the time of day, that's yep. another thing they're constantly running against, especially outdoors. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the clock is, is like exponentially faster when you're shooting outside. There was a time we had just minutes. Everything was running behind on this day. That and we had sucks. one shot. It always does. Uh, but it's um, one shot that we had to get. It was the very last shot for this feature film. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to be at sunset. 
and the oh, golden hour. Oh, no. <laughs> the golden hour. And everything was falling apart on this, on this thing. And um, basically, I mean, like, the, where's the guy with the camera? Where's the guy with the oh. this? You know, the where's the this? Where's the where's the where's the AD? What Son happened to her? You know, a, oh. oh my god! And um and and the other thing was, I was a script supervisor for this film, so it was like, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. Why is this shirt tucked in? It was not tucked in in the other scene that we shot oh. that was supposed to be over here now three hours ago type thing or three days ago. Things like that were happening. And meanwhile, the sun's going, I don't care. Yep, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm quickly. moving. I'm going down. But we got it. Nice. At the last minute. And it was a close up shot. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't like it was showing the sun or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But the light had to be yeah. that. Yeah. And we got it at the last minute. And I even shot a scene for a little video that I was doing for, for somebody. They were, uh, doing this thing anyways and it was like they kept going over their lines and i was producing this for them and i was like god guys you got to get this right the sun's going down we're only shooting this this one day Mm. you don't get this right you know and they kept laughing it was (laughs) two girls they just kept laughing they were friends and they were actors too and then finally i said that's it you guys you got to get it now Mm. and i just came down on them and all of a sudden perfect and it was just at the last second it's that's what i call movie magic and i get it i get it <laughs> that's that's sounds like movie stress to me but man well it's, it, it is there is a lot of it it's a lot of it's a very stressful job yeah that's why one of the things i was saying during these strikes is like these people they work so hard you know to get every every little every little Thing. Every little grain of sand has to come together, you know, for this to work. And it's everything is so dependent on everything else happening that um, it's it's you know they deserve accolades each time. Yeah. Even if they don't win an award, it's like it doesn't matter. You already won because you completed it. You made it. It's in the can, as they say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. So what are some tips that you could give? Now, I know that you are not an iPhone person at all. No, I re- uh, let me let me go ahead and get something clear before. Yes, I get all of the daggum messages and mail that I get now. That's full of anger. Um, <laughs> iPhone. An, an amazing piece of hardware, outstanding hardware that the the. the uh, Apple Silicon, unbelievable processor. Okay, iOS, not my thing. I <laughs> I I just don't care for iOS. Mac OS, I am down for Mac OS. It is so freaking smooth. Um, I can I, I I can think of maybe three crashes that I've had in the last year at random, but. So I'm That's down with that. Yeah, I'm <laughs> down with that. But iPhone, great. iOS, not my thing. So that's why you, you don't see me with an iPhone. And your phone of choice has been, but is it still Pixel? I still enjoy the Pixel line from Google because it's the, quote, pure version of Android. It's not necessarily the, the best hardware. <laughs> Because the Pixel phones have had some issues over the years here and there. And there's other times it's been pretty daggum good. Um, but, yeah, I'm an Android Pixel guy. I like, I like bare bones Android. Did they come out in 2017? Uh, I like to think it was like 16 or 15, but I could be wrong. No, okay. I I, no, I'm wrong. asking you because I'm not sure. I'm just remembering recalling it because i think so there was the windows phone that was that an android too or uh, Mm -mm. android Mm -mm. that's what i thought it was Mm -mm. it had its own os and windows phone was actually microsoft it was um windows mobile that's what they had back in the days yeah um and it was not that good you know but again that's not microsoft's bread and butter 
you know, they have other other things to worry about to make them money. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. They kind of like own half the world. Right. With their it, stuff. They're doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're not hurting. <laughs> but no, I, I I've always respected the iPhone um hardware. Well maybe I take that back. I'm not gonna say always. I got on board with the iPhone on iPhone four. That was a freaking game changer. That phone put us where we are with, with smartphones, in my opinion. You know I agree with you. I didn't even know you know the 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 model before that, the three G or whatever it was called. They had the three G S and they had the three G. I had nothing to do with that. When I started the film festival in two thousand nine, I was using like a regular Motorola or something. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. I wasn't even thinking about iPhones or anything. I just knew something would come out, you know? That thing was that that thing was something else. You yeah, know? And, it, it and it had heads. its controversy with it. It did have controversy with the um, leaks and all of that, and and how Apple went about handling it and so forth or, or whatever. What when leaks? That, oh well, the story with the iPhone four was it was leaked by Gizmodo, I believe, because someone found it in a bar, like in New York or somewhere. Someone left it on a bar accidentally. You know, someone that was testing it or whatever left it out on a bar accidentally. And Gizmodo got their hands on it. And Steve Jobs and Apple and company, they went scorched earth after them about getting that leaks, those leaks taken down and all of that stuff. You know, it was a bit it was a bit controversial, but it was crazy to see it because the phone was again, it was like the four inch uh, candy bar style phone, but it had flat edges and it had rounded aluminum um, bands and ra- around it and, and round buttons. And it was an, unlike anything we've ever seen, you know, but that was all it's you could see was just the body. Yeah, but that was all you could else. see was the body. But then when the phone actually hit the masses and you got to see the software and how the software worked far as being able to take phones and being able to do this task and that task. You couldn't do copy and paste, but, (laughs) but (laughs) it was the slide. It it just changed the way we looked at smartphones and then it had FaceTime on it too. You know, yeah. Doing a quote unquote Skype call over your smartphone to someone on the other side of the country on the, or the other side of the world looking at their looking at their eyes and their facial expression during a conversation psh, that yeah that, that's like star trek stuff yeah. right it, yeah yeah and again i've ne- i'm i've never been like the the huge apple fanboy or whatever but that phone right there i give the i give them the props cuz it 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 set up everything that we have now it really it was the i mean on one side it's the instigator of the of the technology right for yeah. smartphones um, and on the other side, it's the inspiration for where it should go if, you know, as far as getting better yeah. at that, yeah. starting with that as the foundation. Yeah. Pretty awesome. So anyway, so where I was getting. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had a rant there. Sorry. No, it wasn't. I love <laughs> this because every time you share, you know, your dislike for the iOS, you tell me some pretty awesome stories that I didn't hear from you before and I hadn't heard this one. So, and you know me, I love to hear stories. <laughs> so this is pretty good. You know, we were just talking about storytelling and we were talking about, you know, traditional cameras without going into all the tech and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So basically you've got a professional camera, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And you as an expert behind that camera, mm-hmm. you've made some Beautiful photography, which you sell on your gallery with okay. this. You've also got an Android phone. You've shot photos with that. Yeah. That you have also sold. What is that? Because I think a lot of people would look at that and go, you can't do this. You can't do that. Yeah. You can only do this. You can only do that. And I think the crossover between those two, it's that's, me. The, that's <laughs> the recipe. That's the secret. That's the... The inspiration. The crossover right is the person clicking the daggum shutter, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and in, in this instance, that would be me. 
and I'm not trying to come off as all um, braggadocious or anything like that because that's clearly not my personality. But when people are really into photography, they don't just, it's not just about the megapixels, you know? It's, it, it, they don't give a shit about megapixels. Everything's got a lot of megapixels. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter now, <laughs> you know? So it, it boils down to what the photographer is doing. It boils down to, you know, being able to visualize a frame in a moment of time and um, capturing something that, that's, that can invoke some type of emotion, you know, because most shots that we see all over our beloved social media, whether it be Instagram, or Facebook, or what have you, most of those photos that you see are snapshots. And snapshots have their time and place, okay? Everybody can shoot snapshots. You know, I guarantee you, everybody can shoot a snapshot. But not everybody can just inherently shoot a great photograph. Every, Compose a shot. Right. Every, not everybody can inherently shoot a great photograph um, just just by picking up the camera and hitting the shutter. Not everybody can do that. Um, everybody has access to be able to do that at some point, but not everybody can just inherently do it right out the gate. Just wake up out of, out of the bed one morning at 6 a.m. and a, a cup of coffee is brewing and being poured and they think, oh, let me hit the camera and hit the shutter. No, not everybody thinks that way. Most people are thinking, will you hurry up and pour that coffee so I can drink? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, and I think that's the secret sauce there is being able to spend some time with photography without the camera. You know, you look at some of the images that you enjoy and figure out why you enjoy that image. Is it the subject matter? Is it the framing? Is it the lighting? Is it the post-processing? Um, is it the props? Is it the uh, 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 point of view? Uh, is it the, the story that's built into it? Uh, it, it, it? Nostalgia. I know it can uh, yeah. invoke nostalgic uh, feelings. Some type of emotion was, invo was invoked there when you looked at that image. You know, so start to study that stuff. And when you when you figure it out, next thing you know, as you're out with your camera, be it your trusty iPhone or Android phone or what have you, you'll start seeing that stuff differently. And you'll notice that you only pull that camera out when you feel something. Not just because it's there, not just because the shot's there. You you you'll pull that camera out just because you feel it. Um, as I've gotten older and watched my kids grow up more, um, you know, right now my son is a high school senior, and he's he's, and a great student and he's a great athlete, and this is the, the last year that I'm going to watch him perform in high school. OK. And there are times where I'm watching him out there on the field. And he's doing well, you know, but then there's other times he's out there on the field and he's doing well and it hits me. Pick up your damn camera. Click, <laughs> you know. And I'm glad I have those moments because as a parent, there are times there's there's things that I want to see with my own eyes of my child not through not from looking through a viewfinder you know but then there's other times where i'm like oh i need to capture this right now and freeze this moment in time forever you know you just gave me a, a little bit of a i wasn't planning on even this is something it <laughs> just came to mind here for a second here. Whoops. Um, Once again, I'm derailing shows. Shocking. You're just, you're the inspiration. <laughs> um, there's a lot of things happening, happening in the world and, and it affects people. Yeah. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of sadness. Yep. There's a lot of contemplation that can evoke sadness. Yeah. One of the things that I 
have noticed, even through my own downtimes, is that that ability that I was talking about earlier to look at everything through the vision of it, it's a movie, it's a photo, and a, you know, right. that. And I think just because of the way that you just explained that, it just comes to mind that maybe that's something more people should embrace to to go out and about your day and, and looking at not everything. I mean, a cup of coffee is a cup of coffee, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But to look at things when you're out and about from the perspective of a creator, yep. right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to just being consumed as right. a consumer. Right. You know, and, and, and again, everybody can't do it. But I think everybody can learn it, you know, because it's, it is it is quite accessible to all of us, you know, because we all have these tools readily available to us. You don't even have to have the latest iPhone. You don't. iPhone 15 Pro and Pro. Yeah, whatever you have. All of that stuff is just, it just come out. Yeah, everybody's just, it's just, whoo, fanfare for the new iPhone. Let me go ahead and tell you, you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> you can it's use your It's just a little window. Phone. It's a little thing made out of a glass. You look at it and you see what's in front of you. Yeah. You, you know. You can use whatever dang gum viewfinder you have. And 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 like I said, for me, you get to a point where you feel it. It'll it'll it'll, it'll tug at you to pull it out of your pocket. And, and oh, I I I have to get this. And I'm not saying that as in because there are a bunch of people that are posing, if you will. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of poses out there as I can go go to downtown Santa Rosa here and walk around and I'll see see people with cameras around their necks. And these cats are <laughs> they're taking pictures of everything. Sure, that's fine. But at the same time, they're also jumping out in the middle of the streets, getting the cars honking at them because they're just, oh, I just got to get the shot. And you hear them <laughs> say some shit like that. And I'm like, you're full of crap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're just trying to be seen. You know, because yeah. You Acting have, like an you influencer. To, I, I'm an Instagram influencer taking shots of things. Yeah, and that's that's cool. You you yeah. need to be a you're still a you're supposed to be a responsible human, even though you're a creator. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and like I said, you'll feel it when it's supposed to be a shot. Like I was saying earlier, for me, like I've got. I mean, if I posted every single shot that I liked that I take. Mm-hmm. It it would take over my entire life. Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't post the eight thousand photos that I, that I've got. Right, I post a select few, and right. then, you know, it's about the act for me of composing that. And then sometimes I forget about them, and and then mm-hmm. later I go back and I go, wow, look at that, you know. And I might post something that I see differently today than when I shot it three years ago. Oh man, yeah. Even. That's actually, and that's something else that should be considered and should be discussed, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind me bringing this up, but no. going back looking at at the things that you've posted previously, when you look at them, take note of exactly what you feel when you go back and look at those old shots. When you look at those shot, do you feel proud? Do you feel angry? Do you feel like, oh, I missed a shot or, oh, my gosh, what was I thinking? Um, Or, dang, I really boosted the saturation on this. I did not have to boost the saturation. You know, just take a note of all of that stuff Um, because it's part of the growth in this space. It's part of your own personal growth. And if you can go back and look at those old images and feel something, you're doing right. You're doing okay. If you look back at your old images and nothing moves the needle, you might start in the stale, you know, stagnate a little bit, you know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, but, you know, we're all human. We're filled with 
internal stories, mm-hmm. we're different levels of stories within our daily lives. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got layers of things that we're thinking and things that come from memory, things that we, you know, we're thinking about that we have to do in the future or think about for the future. There, we have so many different layers um, in our thinking, in this little brain of ours. It's unbelievable hold how up, much hold room up, is hold in up, there. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This little brain, look here. I don't have no little brain. Let's get this straight right now. Uh, compared to the, uh, <laughs> some of those, uh, I don't know. You know, what is it What is it they say about elephants that their, their brains are really little compared to the yeah. size of their bodies, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah, all those layers are important. We feel things because of them and they have our perspective. And that's part of our story in so many levels that we can turn many stories from one thing that we create, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's how you define it, I guess. <laughs> I wanted to chat before we get too much into this, um, which we already kind of did. But I do want to I want to share uh, a little bit about black magic okay uh black magic design they you know a lot of filmmakers use and it's a monster and i mean a good monster uh of an editing software called davinci result it's so such an awesome piece of software and they give it away for free and they've been doing that for years and it's loaded they also create the black magic camera right And it's one of the most popular indie filmmaking cameras out there. I can't tell you how many independent filmmakers I know uh, that when I ask them what camera they're using, they say black magic. It's small, it's versatile, and it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. And now they just came out with uh, the black magic camera app. Mm -hmm. What do you... What are your feelings on this? Because I know that you 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 do tutorials sometimes of um, using or you did uh, using DaVinci Resolve. Mm-hmm. I have the Gen 1 version of the Pocket 6K that came out about three years ago, I believe, three years ago. But before that, they had other Pocket Cinema cameras. They had a Pocket 4K, which is still pretty daggum good. Yeah. Um, and they also just had a pocket cinema. I think it was another micro four thirds camera too. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they've been doing this for a, a, a little while now. And with the venture resolve, they have a free version of the venture resolve as well as a paid version of the venture resolve. The paid version is called the venture resolve studio and you get a perpetual license for at the time of this recording, $299, $299 US, which is an amazing deal considering the competition is on a subscription model. I am an Adobe authorized affiliate, full disclaimer, but I pay a monthly Adobe subscription because I still use Adobe products. I still use Premiere Pro. I still use from time to time. I still use Lightroom. I still use Photoshop. Um, I still use After Effects. You know, so it, it I, I pay for that every month. But I but having a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K camera, I got DaVinci Resolve Studio um, as part of the deal. And what black magic is doing with this is 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 unbelievable because what happens with the free version of it is it gets you hooked in you see how great this piece of video editing software is from not just navigating a timeline but you get into some of the color grading tools and a lot of the color grading tools that are in the free version are in the studio version too <laughs> Yeah. You know, it's not much, it's not much difference in there. There is a difference, but they offer you a lot of things for free, you know, and yes, there is a caveat. The free version of DaVinci Resolve doesn't run as well 
as the studio version of DaVinci Resolve because the, the free version does not have hardware acceleration capability. And what that means is if you have a pretty weak CPU on your computer, DaVinci Resolve is going to be super slow. So if you ask people if they've tried DaVinci Resolve, most of the time you will hear, yeah, I tried the free version and it was horrible. It was a horrible experience. And you ask them what the, what, what they were running it on. And it's usually a laptop that doesn't have a dedicated GPU. You know, it, it's, it's something that's just not quite up to snuff, you know? So because it doesn't have that hardware acceleration, it is going to be a bit of a bear to run on certain computers. Now, with that said, Black Magic knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Let me give you a little bit of taste of what we offer you, you know. So I know if you stick around with us for 30 days or for 60 days or what have you, you're eventually going to say, you know what? I'm just going to pony up the $300 and be done with it. True. You know, it's it's absolutely brilliant. And that's the model they've been doing for years. Um, they bought... Um, Fairlight and they bought the fusion package and whatnot and they put all of that stuff into one piece of uh, software called DaVinci Resolve so you not only get video editing capabilities but you get color grading capability and you get and color grading is not the same as color correction right, right. you know it's not the same I'm, I'm, I'm sure our audience knows this your audience yeah. knows this and, and our audio. Then you get the audio, Fairlight. That's who they purchased. They acquired them years ago. And then you get the motion graphic side of things, Fusion. This is all in one app. It's pretty awesome. You know, on the Adobe side of things, yeah, you got Premiere and you got After Effects. That's two apps. And you have to do a lot of round tripping every now and then. And granted, Adobe is getting better with some of their things. Um, but having it all in one interface on DaVinci Resolve is pretty daggum cool. And That's what, incredible. And what they're doing with the Blackmagic camera app on iPhone is just another page in their playbook. They've been down this road before. We're going to put this camera out here for free. <laughs> for free. For anybody that's got an iPhone and has an inkling about trying to shoot video. And the iPhone that I have here that is a test unit, I think it's an iPhone 12. I can't hang it out. It's not on my desk right now, but I think it's an iPhone 12. So it's not even the latest model. And I played around with it, and yeah, it's fine. It's great. And as soon as I've put it down, because I've played with it probably four or five times now, and every time I put it down, the next thought in my head was okay so what's their next move what are they going to do to give me as a an add-on you know because it, that's all it is they're, they're basically just trying to pique my interest into taking this video footage and putting it into davinci resolve uh, these newer iphones are now able to shoot pro res and 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 log and, log and, and you pull that into DaVinci Resolve and realize, you know what, I can throw a LUT on this and it's going to look great. And then I can do further um, color color grading on it because it's ProRes and ProRes is pretty daggum lean and mean. And, oh, man, so wait a minute. Now I need to do this. I need to put this this motion tracker window on here because I want to make sure someone's face is blurred throughout the whole scene. Oh, I can't do that in the free version, but that's in the paid version. <laughs> oh, it's only three hundred dollars for it for the rest of my you know, life. Three hundred dollars. That's been the price for Final Cut Pro for years. Yeah, right. Final Cut was the same thing. Final Cut yeah. gave you the per per perpetual license. You know, and Blackmagic has done this with. With this piece of software. And next thing you know, you're looking at, OK, they offer a camera. Oh, this camera shoots 6K and it's under and it's only about two grand and it uses See, the lenses that I already have. <laughs> that's where I think is is part of their plan. Yeah. You know, with this, it's like, well, you're going to buy an iPhone for two grand 
Mm-hmm. If you, if, if, I mean, you, yes, you can make payments and, you know, if you're up for an upgrade, you yeah. know, all that stuff, right. Yeah. Makes it way affordable. Yeah. But, you know, it's kind of like, it's the middle ground next step as far as mm-hmm. in their world. Mm-hmm. Cause now it's like, well, I could just get the black magic camera and the paid version of Da Vinci mm-hmm. and I need nothing more. Now right. I'm ready to make Marvel movies. Basically. Yeah. Essentially. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's, it is, it's outstanding what they've done because it is, it, it continues to go further than that. Miss Susie, you get the six K and that's on a super 35 sensor. Now they've announced the, um, cinema 6k it's not a pocket 6k it's a cinema 6k and that means you have a full frame sensor bigger sensor more more photons you know capturing better low light performance against a sensor that already has some pretty freaking spectacular color science you know so so now they got you in on that and then then you start to think well what about doing live streams and, 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 and doing stuff for, you know, I have some clients that are wanting to live stream or do some talking head stuff and interviews and, you know, they want multi-camera shots. Wow. This camera is only $2,000. I can get one more. Okay. Now I can connect them up to my computer. Oh shoot. They're HDMI. I only have one HDMI port. Wait a minute. I need a switcher. Wait a minute. They got switchers that are only $300. Yeah, I th- I mean that's kind of like you know I can add more and yeah. more and more and it's all right there it's within the same. It's all right there company. in the ecosystem, and then it goes even beyond that. Wait a minute, I I need more than these four inputs. I need eight. Oh, you have a switcher for that too, and it's only a thousand dollars HDMI, and you're going to give me full camera control. Oh, wait a minute. I've decided to build an actual broadcast studio. So I need some type of networking well, capability. This is kind of like what Apple does. Yeah. Right? They have they, all they bring these you tools. into their world, their universe, yeah. and you see nothing around it. Right. Your options are all right there yeah. with them. They're holding the bag and it's everything's brilliant. compatible and it works very well with each other. It's brilliant. You know, I it wish that we could become a full black magic camp at twit tv but we won't because it uh, quite honestly what we're doing now for podcasting is overkill <laughs> yeah well you guys have been doing this for like we've been doing I mean, it forever. for over 15 years you know and we are definitely doing a lot of overkill but boy it looks it looks good we do a damn it does good, it looks like broadcast we like do you're a on damn cnn good job. or something yes we do a damn good job with all of our shows we do um, but yeah, sometimes I do wish that we went full black magic. We do use black magic's video hub tools, um, to help us with, um, switching cameras. We have a yeah. new tech TriCaster, but we use black magic's video hub hardware that allows us to figure out what inputs are what and so forth. And it's just super freaking easy, but man, if we had just do studio, um, 4Ks from Black Magic and just threw those on a on a on a stand in the studio. Oh, just gosh almighty! <laughs> that is really cool. But again, that would be total overkill. Yeah, you, you, it's like <laughs> a kid podcast. with all the toys. Oh my God! If yeah. I had all the, you know, I hear you. <laughs> I, that that is the thing that I I one thing I love about the company is, you know. The Laporte family, they 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 made these investments years ago and created a product that we have today. Um, but they're like, you know what? We're, we're not going to spend any more money on stuff like that because it's totally Well, and overkill. you don't need to because you know, we're nobody doing just else fine. is. <laughs> yeah, and nobody else is able to do what you guys are doing. Right. You know, it makes it really, that's like, yeah. By the way, I'm going to publicly thank you for um interviewing me in your in your show no no, that's uh, no problem just seeing the twit logo at the beginning and everything oh my god i was like a 16 year old (laughs) just look oh my god (laughs) i get it trust me and 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 it's not a problem i appreciate you being on
No, it's uh, it was like the highlight of my, and and that was like two days before the film festival too. That's <laughs> I right. was like, yeah. okay, That's I gotta right. beat this. I gotta beat this feeling now. <laughs> 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 so, um, all right, I think we covered pretty much everything. We all now know how uh, Ant feels about iOS. androids. <laughs> No, I'm trying to put this on the positive light. (laughs) Uh, Black magic cameras, the and that's unfortunate too. That and and hopefully they'll come out with an Android version. They won't. They won't. (laughs) (laughs) They won't. They won't. They don't need to. They don't need to. It is it is extra work to come up with an Android version because of all of the different versions of Android out there on on devices. It makes no sense. For them to I've come up actually with an heard version. a long time ago. I was like, "Why do they always come out with the iOS version before?" And somebody told me a long time ago. And see, I don't know if this is still holding true that it's more difficult to make an Android to work with the Android. It is. Uh, so I'm right. So it I, is. So whoever, yes. So that's and, still correct. And okay. and and I'm gonna use difficult loosely. Okay. It is. Yeah. It is a little more inconvenient developing something for android because there are there's more than one flagship device out there you have samsung's whatever device they have then you have um, the pixel line whatever device it has at that time so that's two flagships right there they don't both have the same uniform screen they both don't have the same type of chipsets um, and then you have the other Android phones that most people buy because everybody doesn't buy flagships. Everybody's not spending a thousand dollars on a damn phone. Um, oh, I, I know they come into the film festival. I'm like, what is this? And right. I'm Googling it. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. The sens- sensible people are buying phones. That well, are and in, in other budget. countries too, in other yeah. countries, they use phones that we've never even heard of here, right. especially in Asia and stuff like that. Right. I'm like, what is that? That is Right. Interesting. So yeah. the developers have to figure out, okay, so, oh, that's not a six inch screen. That is a five inch screen. Oh, that's not a tensor chip. That is an, uh, I don't know, Snapdragon 400. And that's and, why there are more free apps on the Apple store or yeah. whatever, iOS, than yeah. there are for Android. Yeah. Apple keeps it simplified for developers. It's yeah. not necessarily difficult. It's just more convenient. And, and, you know, when it comes to creativity, you're always experimenting. And um, that's what I always say to people is like, well, if you're if your main passion is creativity, I mean, we all know you got to work and you got to do business stuff on on the computer, Mm -hmm. which Apple can handle that, too. You know, Mm -hmm. but if you're if your passion is creativity, then just get a Mac, you Mm -hmm. know. So, well, awesome. Possum. <laughs> Possum. Oh, gosh. Bless your heart. <laughs> um, you made me feel 15. <laughs> it's all that 15 talk. <laughs> um, I appreciate you uh, coming on to the show. Uh, your, your input, your information, your advice, your tips, your inspiration. All the knowledge and experience you have sorry is really for being valuable. Long-winded. I'm sorry for being long winded. No, that's <laughs> um see, we go deep in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually part of the attraction, you know, that someone can sit down and, and really be inspired by by it. It's almost philosophical in a way, right? Because that's how we think anyways. Yeah. Yeah. This is Food true. for thought. You know, we gotta keep thinking. Yep. Um so Aunt, any last words for? I feel like I'm. <laughs> when I say last words, it always is like, why do I keep saying last words? You know, like. It <laughs> How about so parting good. shots or, or parting notes? Yes, any last something. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing other than, folks, make sure you're um, continuing to get out there and, and shoot because you feel like shooting, not because you're forced to do it. Get out there because you want to be out there and and just shoot. And you don't even necessarily have to be, quote, out there. It could be right there in the comfort of your home, too. So just please continue to shoot 
when you feel like it. And also make sure you're checking out all of the fine content at our podcast network that's been around oh, about 15 years. Maybe it's a little more. I, I, I can't quite Probably remember off the top more. of my head. It might be a little bit more. Twit.tv. And um, my particular show that I co-host is called This Week in Google, which mm, 80% of the time we talk about other things beyond Google. <laughs> It's like more, iOS. It's no, more about kidding. big. It's more about big tech in general. But that is this week in Google on the twit.tv network. Our website is twit.tv slash twig for this week in Google. Thank you, and say goodbye to our listeners. Goodbye, listeners. Good to see you. <laughs>